Hello and welcome back to Complex Analysis. We've reached part 29 in the series and today we will talk about some important inequalities for derivatives called Cauchy's inequalities and the famous Leo Wiel's theorem. This one states that all entire bounded functions are constant. And indeed, by using Cauchy's inequalities, we can easily prove this fact. However, before we start, you know, I really want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. Thanks to your support, I can make more of these videos. And with this, let's immediately start formulating the important inequalities for this video. Here, the assumptions are the same as in the last videos. We have an open set D, a holomorphic function F defined on this set, and then we choose a closed disk BRZ0 inside D. This is important because you know, as always, we want to calculate the contour integral along this circle. And then you already know from the last video that the nth derivative of F at the point Z0 exists. And now what we want is an estimate for the absolute value. And indeed we can show it's bounded from above by n factorial divided by r to the power n times the supremum of the function f on this circle. And as always we denote this circle by partial d br z0. So it stands for the boundary of the disk with radius r and middle point z0. So most importantly you should see the radius of this disk goes into the denominator here. Once again you see the restrictions the notion holomorphic gives to functions. So in this case, the derivatives of a holomorphic function cannot be arbitrarily large. Okay, so you see, this is a nice fact, so now let's prove it. Of course, here you might already guess that we can use the formulas for the derivatives we have discussed in the last video. The only change here is that we have an absolute value around it. Otherwise you see it's the same formula with n factorial and the curve integral. And the curve that goes in this integral is given by a parameterized curve that goes around the circle once. So we know we can formulate this by r times e to the power i t, where t goes from 0 to 2 pi. So please don't forget it's important that the radius r goes here in as well. However, now this is a curve that describes a circle around the origin. So to get it around Z0, we have to translate by this complex number. In other words, we just add Z0. Okay, so now this parameterized curve we can use to reformulate this contour integral. So more precisely, it means now we have the integral from 0 to 2 pi of f at the values of the curve divided by the value of the curve minus z0 to the power n plus 1. So you see z0 cancels, so what remains is r times e to the power i t to the power n plus 1. Okay, and then the whole thing times the derivative of the curve, which is r times i times e to the power i t dt. So there we have it, this is what we get when we want to calculate this contour integral. So the first thing you should see is that we can cancel this r and this e to the power i t. Moreover, also this i here in front will cancel. Otherwise we can bring the 1 divided by r to the power n in front of the integral. And then the only thing that remains inside the integral is the function f and in the denominator e to the power i t to the power n. Which is simply e to the power i t times minus n. And please don't forget, all this we have inside the absolute value. This is important because in the next step we want to use our standard estimate for integrals when we pull in the absolute value. Some people call it a triangle inequality for integrals and it just means the value can't get smaller. In other words, it means we have a less or equal sign here. And then we have everything as before, but the absolute value now inside the integral sign. Okay, then the next thing to note is that the absolute value of this complex number is always 1. In other words, we can just ignore it here for the absolute value. 
And then we can estimate the whole integral by using the largest value f can have, which would simply be the supremum of f or of the absolute value of f along the circle. So in other words, we have an upper bound here. And then our estimate is finished. We have the same factor here. We get two times pi from the integral times the upper bound. Hence, the last thing to note is that two pi i also cancels. And then you see, we have proven the fact from above. So essentially we can say this whole calculation, this estimate here follows immediately from Cauchy's integral formula. Okay, then I would say we are ready for an application of this estimate. As promised at the beginning, we want to use it for so-called entire functions. There, please recall, these are simply holomorphic functions where the domain is the whole complex plane. However, now we also assume that this entire function is a bounded one. This simply means that the supremum of the function in the absolute value is finite. So it's a well-defined non-negative number we can call c. So you see, this here can be very helpful if we want to use the estimate from above. Therefore, let's immediately do that for the first derivative. This means the n in the formula here is equal to 1. Hence, it's very simple. We just have 1 factorial in the numerator and r to the power 1 in the denominator. And then, just as before, times the supremum of the absolute value of f along the circle with radius r. However, now we can simply estimate this supremum with the constant c. So you see, the whole thing gets very short and it holds no matter how large we choose the radius r. This is the case because our domain of the function f is so large that every disk lies inside it. Therefore, the whole estimate here holds for all radii r and for all complex numbers z0. However, here you should see we can make the right hand side as small as we want when we increase r as much as we want. Therefore, the only possibility for the left hand side is that it is 0. So in other words, the first derivative has to vanish. And now we know for a connected domain that this implies that the function f is constant. On c, only a constant function can have a derivative that vanishes everywhere. So this is a very important fact because it tells us if we have a non-constant function that is holomorphic and bounded, then the domain can't be the whole complex plane. And because this is an important fact one can use often, it has a name, it's called Liouville's theorem. In summary, it tells us an entire function that is also bounded needs to be constant. Therefore, if you see an entire function that is clearly not constant, then you know it's also not bounded. So for example, the sine function defined in the complex numbers is clearly holomorphic, entire, but not constant. Therefore we know it's also not bounded. So you know it's bounded for real numbers, but it can't be bounded for complex numbers. Okay, so we will use Liouville's theorem later again. So I would say let's meet in the next video. Have a nice day and bye.